powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manabuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad. Today we share with us on the anointing for greater things. If we truly want to accomplish great things in life, it's not going to be based on our human strength or our human capacity. There is a limit to what we can do but there is no limit to the ability of the Spirit that is at work in us. You know, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel. The anointing empowers. The anointing energizes and the anointing inspires. The, the anointing is not only for maybe for preaching, for teaching. The anointing also is for business. The anointing is for business. The anointing is for building a healthy relationship. So when we talk about the anointing, the anointing is not limited to what we want to do in ministry, but the anointing works in all aspects of life if we choose to walk in the light of that anointing that God has given to us. The word Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. And if Christ dwells in you, it is an indication that you have the anointing for greater works. That you can do great things. That was why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things, not just some things. He said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Now, how is Paul going to achieve that? He's going to achieve that because the source of the anointing dwells in him, which is Christ. The source of the anointing dwells in him, which is Christ. Because Christ dwells in him, nothing can be impossible to him. Christ is the source of the anointing. So I want to read the scripture to us here in, in John Gospel 14, verse 12. In John Gospel 14, verse 12, he said, Verily, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. Why are we going to do greater works? Because Jesus is with the Father. And by we accepting him as Lord and the Savior of our life, he dwells to God. So Christ in us is the source of the anointing. And because his anointing dwells in us, we can do greater works. We can do greater things. You know, most people say they can't do greater things because of fact, I'm not called to do great things. You know, everything in the body of Christ, we want to say, you're not called to do great things, you're not called to do this, you're not called to do that. But I just want to make it clear. If Christ is in you, it is an indication that you can produce greatness. If Christ is in you, it is an indication that you can produce greatness in any area where God has called you to serve or where God has called you to function. Because Christ is in you. God wants us to be conscious of the reality of his presence that is within us. 
I said, God wants us to be conscious of the reality of his presence that is within us. He wants us to be conscious of the reality of his presence that is within us. Because if we are not conscious of the reality of his presence that is within us, we cannot flow in the anointing. We can, because that anointing is the presence of God. I said, the anointing is the presence of God that enable us to do beyond our human capacity. The anointing empowers us to function supernaturally. It simply means we exceed our human ability. There is a limit to what you can achieve as a man, but there is no limit to what you can achieve when the Spirit of God comes upon you, when the Spirit of God is within you, or when the Spirit of God gives you a revelation or empowers you to do something. There is a limit to what you can handle in the natural, but there is no limit to what you can do when the anointing of God's Spirit comes upon you to do that. Now, it's said here, in, in, in John Gospel 14 verse 12 look at this very powerful scripture John Gospel 14 verse 12 he said verily I say unto you he that believeth on me he that believeth on me this is the foundation if you want to function in the anointing you have to believe in Jesus you have to believe that Christ is in you he is supplying the strength you have to believe that the Christ in you is supplying Applying the strength. So he said, you have to believe in me. Look at what he said. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. This is powerful. He that believeth. There are people who don't believe. And when you don't believe, you can't see the manifestation. It is those who believe that will experience supernatural health. It is those who believe that will do the exceptional, that will manifest the extraordinary. He said here, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. That simply means Jesus wants us to be an extension of who, of who he is wherever we go. When we go into the marketplace, he wants us to be an extension of his goodness. Wherever we step into, he wants us to be a manifestation of his goodness. And look at what he said. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. You see, when we have the revelation of the Christ in us, it becomes the pathway to supernatural living. It becomes the pathway to supernatural living. So if I want to live supernaturally, is to function in this consciousness of believing what he has said, who he is, that empowers me to produce more results, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me. So the anointing is on us for a purpose. God didn't give us the anointing for, for we to merchandise the anointing or use it to take advantage of people. The anointing is for service. The anointing is for advancing the kingdom. You are anointed to solve problems. You are anointed to bring ministry to someone. You are anointed to bring hope to the hopeless. You are anointed to make a difference in your world. You are anointed to be in a position of distinction as you can be an inspiration to others. The anointing is on you for a purpose. Anointing for greater works. There are things you want to do in your human strength. You're limited. In our human strength, we're limited. But by the presence of God in us, we're not limited. This is why we can say with God all things are possible. Why are we saying with God all things are possible? We're saying with God all things are possible because we know the one that lives inside of us. We are saying with God all things are possible because the source of life is in us. We are saying with God all things are possible because the greater one is greater than any situation before us. He said, with God all things are possible. The anointing empowers. The anointing refresh. The anointing strengthen. The anointing also inspires. 
One of the things that can inspire us for greater work is when we know that we are anointed. The anointing inspire. It will inspire you to go beyond your, your, your limits, beyond your strength, beyond what they say you can't do because you've been inspired by the Spirit of God. There is someone watching right now. The anointing for great finances upon you. The anointing for great finance. I believe it takes the anointing to make money. True. I believe it takes the anointing to prosper. It takes the anointing to prosper. Whether it's in business, whether it's in ministry, it takes the anointing to prosper. Without the anointing of God's Spirit, there'll be toiling and hard labor. Without the anointing. This is why we have to be conscious of that anointing we have from Christ that is in us. You need to walk in that mentality. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. God wants you to be conscious that you are anointed to do great things. And those who have the revelation that they are anointed to do great things, they will always dream big dreams. Dreams that is far beyond their paycheck. Dream that is based on the ability of God. A lot of people dream according to who they are. They don't dream according to what they have in Christ. They dream according to who they are. Okay, they look at themselves. I don't have the cash. I don't have this. I don't have that. But there is dreaming according to who you are in Christ. Then who you just are as a person. You know, some people look at themselves and they see all the limitations. They don't see the possibilities because they are dreaming based on their environment. They are not dreaming based on who they are in Christ Jesus. If you dream based on who you are in Christ Jesus, no situation can resist the manifestation of your favor. No situation can resist the manifestation of your favor if you can walk in the revelation of who you are in Him. The anointing is on you for extraordinary achievements. I said the anointing is on you for extraordinary achievements. You can achieve extraordinary effortlessly. You know, you are not trying to struggle like many people could do. You're not trying to toil like many would do. But suddenly the, the doors are opening. The doors are opening. The things they said is going to take you five years, it's going to take you ten years, it's going to take you twenty years. But suddenly in two months' time it was fixed. Suddenly in one year time it was fixed. They told you you cannot be able to have it. They told you that you don't have the financial backup to experience the result. But because you are anointed, I often say to people that anointing is a supernatural resource given to us to accomplish supernatural visions. The anointing is a supernatural resource given to us to accomplish supernatural visions. What are supernatural visions? They are in different dimensions. God can give you a vision far beyond your human capacity that in the natural, all your life, if you try to raise the money, you cannot. But supernaturally, God begin to send people into your life and begin to open the doors far beyond your human capacity. He start opening the doors far beyond your human capacity. You notice acceleration in grace. You notice acceleration in resources. You notice acceleration in, in divine connection, in open doors. There are certain things you cannot manifest based on your human ability, but you can only manifest them because of the manifestation of the anointing of God's Spirit that is at work in you. So you are anointed. The anointed for great things. When David stood before Goliath, do you think that that was ordinary? The anointing was on him. The anointing. Remember that Jesse came to the, remember that Samuel came to the house of Jesse and anointed David. That anointing that came on him empowered him to rise beyond human expectation. It is the anointing that exceeds human expectation. I said it is the anointing that exceeds human expectation. There is a human expectation. There is what men expect you to do, what men expect you to achieve, what men expect you to manifest. There is a human expectation. But the anointing exceeds human expectation. This is why Jesus said this. I'd like to read this to us in Luke chapter 4. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 4, I want to read from verse, from verse 18. 
Look at what Jesus said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Means empowered me. Means he has also invested so much heavenly resources in him. Jesus walked on this earth as a man. That was why he was tempted in orphans like we have been tempted, but he never gave it. Jesus had thought. Jesus had emotion. Jesus walked on this earth as a man. But one thing I want you to understand is that when Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, he acknowledged that God has placed upon him an anointing for the work of redemption. That the redemption of humanity is going to be possible because there was an anointing on his life. There is a responsibility you cannot handle except you are anointed to do it. There is a responsibility you cannot handle. There are things you can't do. There is a limit to the kind of finances you can receive if you are not anointed. There is a, there is a limit to what you can do if the anointing of God's spirit is not backing you up. It is by that anointing that the yokes are broken. Not only will the yokes break, listen to this, when the anointing is in full manifestation, yokes are being destroyed. The anointing is the, is the burden removing power of God. The anointing is the burden removing power of God. The anointing removes the burden. There are certain things you've been struggling with. You've been, you've been trying to handle this. It has been like a battle. And suddenly you are reading the scriptures. The word of God, I call it the anointed word. The word of God is called the anointed word. Why is it called the anointed word? It's because we're talking about the presence of Jesus. And whenever you talk about the presence of Christ, you are releasing power. The scriptures are about Christ. As we read it and make Jesus our focus, if we speak, we'll be releasing so much energy into the atmosphere. The anointing is extraordinary. It's not just ordinary, folks. The anointing removes yokes. The anointing destroys yoke. The anointing also breaks yoke because the anointing is an expression of the glory of God. It's also an expression of God's glory. I'm telling you, people of God, the anointing is also an expression of the glory of God. When it comes to the glory of God, it's not static. There is several manifestations of the glory of God. I said the word, the word, the glory, the glory of God is, 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 is so heavy that the definitions we get about it cannot give us the total picture of what God's glory looks like. Thank God for the definitions in Hebrew and in Greek. But listen to this. The glory of God is more than the definition they gave about the glory. Because the glory of God can manifest in different ways. If you are a student of the Old Testament, you read part of the Old Testament, you will notice how God manifested himself to man in different dimensions. In different dimensions, he manifested himself. So when it comes to the glory of God, it's not just limited to one manifestation. It is multi, uh, multi-dimensional manifestation. Multi-dimensional. It's not just one dimension. It's multi-dimension. It's multi-dimensional. It's manifesting in this area. It's manifesting in this area. That was why he said Christ in you. That was the conclusion Paul could do. The conclusion that Paul could do about the glory was this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That was so powerful because that is the only way he can put it. Which other word can I use to explain this thing to the church? Then he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if Christ is in you, then expect all kinds of manifestation because he empowers, he energizes, he inspires, and he strengthens. If Christ is in you, you don't look for glory. You know, some people said, oh, we're praying for the glory of God to come down. We're praying for the glory of God to show up. No, we don't pray for the glory of God to show up. When we walk in the consciousness of the Christ in us, he will always manifest himself. As we pray, we pray to get ourselves ready. We pray as we can be able to walk in the flow. 
The reason for prayer is to help us create an atmosphere mentally, emotionally, and spiritually where we can just flow with what is already going on. The Father is already moving. The Father is already doing it. So when we pray, fast and pray, meditate on the Word of God, it helps us to, to, to join the flow of what God is already doing. That is what happens. If we don't have this mentality that the glory of God is already in operation, but as we fast and pray, meditate on God's word, what by the leading of the Spirit of God, what will happen is that it helps us to flow as we pray, as we pray in tongues. This is why we pray in the Spirit. We pray in the Spirit to create an atmosphere where there can be a manifestation of the glory. We pray in the Spirit to enable us, it enables us to be able to succeed in the things of the Spirit. One of the ways we succeed in the things of the Spirit is when we pray in the Spirit because that leads us to, it opens the door for the leading of the Holy Ghost. It opens the door. But the leading of the Spirit, one of the ways we enjoy the leading of the Spirit is as we pray in tongues, as we pray in the Spirit. As we pray in the Spirit, we are quick to the voice of God. We are sensitive to His will. We are sensitive to His counsel. We are sensitive to His thought. We, we, we can quickly step into the thoughts of God because we, as we pray in the Spirit, our spirit man is alert. It's alert. It's quick to receive from God. Can I say this to you, people of God? The scripture said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, he said they are the sons of God. He said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, he said they are the sons of God. The true leading of the Spirit begins when we submit to the Spirit. The true leading of the Spirit of God begins when we submit to the Holy Ghost. The glory of God is already in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Church, listen to this. If we walk in the consciousness of that scripture and we're sensitive to the Holy Ghost, something amazing will break out. If we walk in the consciousness of the Christ in us, if we walk in the revelation that of Christ in us, when we walk in this revelation that I am anointed because of Christ in me, friends, we are going to see manifestations. We are going to see extraordinary. A preacher asked God a question one time. He said, why am I not seeing miracles in my church? Why am I not seeing healings in my church? Then God replied, you don't preach it. He said, if you preach it, you will see it. That simply means as we speak the word, we have the presence. Whatever we are saying will create the presence of what we are saying. Whatever we are saying will create the presence, the manifestation of what we are saying. So if we teach on the glory, when we teach on the power of God, when we teach on the name of Jesus, when we teach on healing, when we, whatever we are teaching is what we, the atmosphere that we created. Because words actually is the foundation for any manifestation we want to experience. Words are the very foundation for the manifestation we want to experience. So what manifestation of the anointing do you want to experience? What manifestation of the glory do you want to experience? This is the reason why we need to renew our mind as we can function in the complete knowledge of who we are in Christ that would lead us into greater manifestation. So if we don't preach it, we can't see it. If we don't preach it, if I want to see people being healed, I preach on healing. As I preach on healing and pray for people, people are going to heal. We need to sow the seed before we can have the harvest. The harvest we're looking for is healing. Teaching on healing is the seed we sow to experience those manifestations. As we teach the word, then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God as we teach the word of God. Maybe you're believing God for financial prosperity as teaching goes on it. Then you have faith to believe God to receive that. It is only what you have faith for you can experience. I said it is only what you have faith for that you can experience your experience of whatever grace have received. Whatever the grace of God has for us, it is by faith we can experience it. It is by faith we can connect with it. It is by faith we can experience it. Someone is watching this broadcast today. The anointing of God's Spirit will empower you to exceed expectation. 
the anointing of God's Spirit will empower you for innovation, for creativity. It will empower you to accelerate beyond every natural and human expectation. The anointing of God's Spirit helps you to break limitation. The things he said, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know who's going to help me. Because the anointing is upon you, the anointing attracts resources. The anointing attracts resources. The anointing attracts great relationship. The anointing is your weapon against any warfare that want to resist you. Because I'm anointed and if I pray, heaven will hear me. Because I'm anointed. God hears the prayer of his anointed. That was why he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Touch not my anointed. Don't touch the anointed and do the prophet no harm. Why did he say that? Because anyone who touches the anointed is getting ready for trouble they can handle. Because that anointing is like a sword, it can turn against them. The anointing is like a sword, it can turn against them. Have you noticed people who started attacking a righteous man, fighting a righteous man, but suddenly things begin to affect them? Their business went down, their relationship went down, their children became wayward. You know what happened? It is that sword. Is that sword? The anointed man may not even pray against them, but because the word of God said, Don't touch their disobedience, open door for evil spirit to take advantage of them. They are disobedient. God said, touch not my anointed. It is for our protection. It is for our favor. So if a person goes and touch the anointed, he's opening door for evil spirit to come after them. That is what happened. People don't know this. This is why when people stand up to fight a preacher who have helped them, who have taught them the word of God, they go about blackmailing the preacher, fighting the preacher, coming and attacking the preacher, trying to ruin the preacher's life. They are opening door for evil spirits to take advantage of them because those evil spirits understand that the word have already said, touch not my anointed. So by touching them, it is same evil spirit that provoke the person to touch the anointed and that same evil spirit will ruin them. This is why an anointed person is expected to walk in love. Because walking in love helps you to secure and protect the destinies of many. Because your anger and bitterness and curse can destroy the lives of people. This is why we are not expected to curse people. We are expected to bless people. But when anointed people get angry, the tendency for them to speak words that are not consistent with God's word is there. And evil spirit can take advantage of those words and bring them to pass. This is why we got to walk in love. That was why Jesus said a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. If you are anointed, you are not ordinary. You are extraordinary. If you are anointed, you are powerful. This is why you need to be careful of who you hang out with or what you hang out with. You know, you got to be careful because you are anointed. Most people that don't have respect for the anointing pay for it. I'm telling you, I've seen this all over my life in ministry for more than 20 years today. I've seen people hurt their destiny because they started fighting an anointed person. The anointed person may be calm but be very careful because the word said don't touch, don't touch. If you say don't touch, it means if you do, something will go wrong. Something will go wrong. This is why people's relationships are dying today. People are being infected with all kinds of diseases. They can't tell where these things are coming from. People are going through severe attacks from hell because they have started fighting people they were supposed to be praying for. So God could say it. It's not God who come after them. Because they are walking in disobedience, the enemy takes advantage. The enemy is looking for an opportunity for you to derail from the word of God, then he strikes. This is why he wants you to put mouth on an anointed person. He wants you to attack an anointed woman of God, an anointed man of God, because he knows once you do that, you are opening a door for him to strike. This is why we got to be careful. If you don't like a ministry, you leave that ministry in peace and go where God wants you to be and be in peace and mind your business. Don't go and attack. Don't go and fight. Don't sow wrong seed in the hearts of people. Don't begin to fight and begin to create problems and try to do things to subdue them. Don't do that. Even when you see the pastor falling into adultery, pray for him. Talk to God about him. Leave him with God. It's not your job to be the judge. You are not to be the judge. 
a lot of people in the body of Christ because of lack of knowledge and they are, they are so zealous and they got themselves into all kinds of trouble. If someone comes and tell me this man of God fall into adultery, this woman of God, what's my business with that? My business is to pray for them. My job is to pray for them. God will talk to them. Except God tells me, Apostle Faithman, I wanted to go talk to that man of God. If God didn't send me, I am not going. If God didn't ask me to do it, I am not going to do it. That's not my job. I didn't call the man. I didn't call the woman. I don't want to do what I cannot handle. I don't want to bite more. I have so much on my table. I'm not trying to step ahead of God. Sometimes people felt a, a, a man of God in my city had a problem and I was just praying for him. Where, where he has preached to me once and he had this problem and the police was looking for him. I was just praying, oh God, help this man of God. Help this man of God. I never said, oh my God, oh he's in trouble right now. Oh look at him. He's not righteous. Oh he's not holy. He's not praying very well. Oh. If you think you're standing, the Bible said, take heed, take heed, except you fall. A lot of people are falling because when people were falling, they never prayed for them. This is very important. Anointed people, listen to this. When you hear a man of God is falling, a believer is falling, don't just say, well, they are not spiritual. Oh, well, they are not powerful. Oh, they are not fasting so much. Oh, don't say that. Because the people that think they are standing, we all stand by the grace of God. The scripture said, it's not of him that we let, of him that run. And he said, it's God who showeth mercy. I stand by the grace of God, doing three broadcasts, four broadcasts every week, every day. Sometimes, friend, it, it has to be the Holy Ghost. It without the Holy Ghost, I can't be here ministering to you in this capacity. There is no way I could do this, friends. You, I can't get this done by reading. How many books am I going to read to be able to teach, to be able to do like 25 broadcasts in a week? 30 broadcasts in a week. That can only be by the Spirit of God. That the Holy Ghost pours it into you and you're able to minister to the nations. It is by the Spirit. The supply of the Spirit is the reason for our energy. I said the supply of the Spirit is the reason for our energy. We are people of supernatural energy because of the supply of the Spirit of God. People of God, listen to this. We are anointed to make a difference. We are anointed to change our world. Listen to this. When you walk in the consciousness of the anointing, it empowers you to create. It empowers you to produce. It empowers you to initiate. There are things, ideas, supernatural concepts, you know, idea about how to run large organization. You know, the Spirit of God could talk to us about some, some things that is so amazing, that is far beyond our human capacity. The, 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 the wisdom of God comes upon us. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, it said, This Daniel was preferred above all because of an excellent spirit that was upon him, that is within him. Now, that excellent spirit is the Holy Ghost. Because of the anointing, that was why Daniel was exceptional. Daniel was preferred above all because of an excellent spirit. He was not excellent because he went to the best school. He was excellent because of the presence of God that was at work in his life. He was, he was excellent because of the wisdom of God. The revelation of the spirit that came to Daniel, he was dissolving those hard sentences. He was bringing insight into the handwriting. You know, they were, God started writing on the wall and suddenly Daniel, they called Daniel and he started bringing interpretation. This man had the ability to dissolve hard sentences. Because he has submitted himself to the will of God, then he received what is called the supply of the spirit. And it is a supply of the spirit you need to be effective, to be productive, and to succeed in your God-given assignment. Without the supply of the spirit, you're limited. You won't be able to achieve much. You won't be able to do much. It is the supply of the spirit of God that enables us to break limitation and create new standard and set the pace. Also take the lead wherever we go because of the presence of the spirit of God. If you're watching this broadcast right now and you don't know Jesus, listen to this people of God. The anointing is on your life for a mission. Never take yourself for granted. Never look at yourself and say, I'm nobody. You are somebody. You are somebody. You are anointed.
Christ in you, the source of the anointing. From this day forward, never talk down on yourself. Your words carry energy. When you speak, speak with an expectation. When you think, think with an expectation. Your words carry energy. The power of God is inside of you. And because His power is in you, nothing can be impossible to you. The power of God is inside of you right now. Right now, right now, be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone watching this broadcast that is battling with cancer. I command the cancer to die to the root in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is producing that result that is not of God, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Rekorobo shanta la baba. Mokole de shadari baraba. Rekorobo shadara ba shakunto ribra kababa. Rekande de debo shanta la baba. Likande de debo shoto no blada da ba shanta la baba. Rekande raba shokunda la baba. Be healed right now. I command that tooth pain to be healed right now. Somebody was having a pain on their tooth and you're being healed right now by the power of God in the name of Jesus. All this having some battles with your eyes. I command your vision to be clearer. I command your eyes to be healed by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I command skin diseases to be healed by the power of God. I command skin diseases to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. I command that pain on your waist region to be gone by the power of God. I command the waste on your waste region to be gone in the name of Jesus. There is a lady you were supposed to be paid by the, by the government. And this money has delayed for a very long time. Listen to this. Supernaturally, that money is going to come. For in the name of Jesus, I lose that finance. I lose that money in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. There is someone right now. The power of God is coming upon you. You're praying in tongues. The power of God is coming upon you. Receive in the name of Jesus. Someone, you're not going to lose your home. I prophesy to you. Miracle money is coming to you. Miracle money is coming to you. You are not going to lose your home. Receive supernatural grace for extraordinary manifestation. In the name of Jesus, needs are met. Bills are paid right now. The anointing is coming upon people right now. Yokes are destroyed. I command everything that is anything that is yoking you mentally, emotionally, financially. I command it to be broken by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, may this yoke be destroyed right now. In in Jesus' name, someone just got healed on their ankle region. Your ankle is being healed by the power of God. Your ankle is being healed by the power of God. I felt that anointing that just came upon you. Your ankle is healed by the power of God. There is someone you're watching this broadcast. You're believing God for a property for your ministry. You're believing God for a, a, a facility for your ministry. Listen to this. There's going to be a supernatural open door in the next six months. From now till December, someone you're watching this broadcast, something amazing is going to break out and someone will call you and ask you, how much can you pay for this? I'm led to sell this to you. Makorita Shapababa. Receive supernatural facility in the name of Jesus. Someone is watching this broadcast and the Lord said, I'm going to use you mightily in these last days. The Lord said, I'm going to use you mightily in these last days. Right now, by the power of God, receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mighty manifestation of the Spirit of God. Mighty release of the Spirit of God. Mighty release of the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Good news is coming your way. Good news is coming your way. Good news is coming in your way. In the name of Jesus, I decree right now that you experience a supernatural help. Rosso 
Right now, supernatural insight into scriptures. There is someone when you read the Bible, you don't get to understand them. From this day forward, you begin to have supernatural insight into the scriptures. Supernatural insight into the scriptures. Supernatural insight into the scriptures. Revelation and utterance coming to you. Revelation and utterance coming to you. Revelation and utterance coming to you. In the name of Jesus, Lakura da Shatamba. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Makura da Seketoli Baba. Receive the ability to do big things. Receive the ability to do extraordinary things. Receive the ability to break forth. Receive the ability to reign. Mashakatali Kapa Baba. The things they told you you can do, right now the ability is on you to do it. The things they tell you cannot have, right now the ability to have it is upon you. The things they tell you you cannot achieve, the ability is upon you right now. Receive in the name of Jesus. I command every storm against you to be diverted. In the name of Jesus, I command the storms to be diverted. In the name of Jesus, may the storm be diverted. May the storm be diverted. In the name of Jesus, I decree supernatural jobs coming to you. I release supernatural jobs. I release supernatural jobs. Supernatural opportunities. Heaven helping you. Heaven helping you. Heaven helping you. Heaven helping you. Heaven is helping you right now. Look over Shaka Baba. Ring over Shaka Baba. There is someone watching this broadcast. The anointing just came upon you right now. And you can feel it. You can tell that something is upon you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That's the power of God. That is the power of God. They go over Santa Baba. Good news is coming your way. Good news is coming your way. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel the power of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel the power of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Someone just received a healing in, in their body right now. You've been healed right now in your body. You've been healed by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The anointing is all over this place. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, I feel that all over the place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I hear this in my spirit. I will restore. I will enlarge. I will increase. I will restore. I will enlarge. I will increase, says the Spirit of the Lord. He said, I will restore. I will enlarge. I will increase. He said, He will restore. He said, He will enlarge. He said, He will increase. Thank you, Father. Receive it. That's your prophetic word. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're watching this broadcast and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the greatest thing you can ever do is to receive Christ into your life. And if you don't know Jesus, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, it means you're born again and the Holy Ghost is going to lead you from this day forward and you will not remain the same. Now, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. When you subscribe, you will have opportunity to watch these teachings I'm doing over and over and along all the prayers we have for you here. And also, I want to encourage you to keep watching Finish World TV that's come. It's a ministry on the cutting edge that is helping many people around the world. And also, consider partnering with this ministry today. Your partnership will be helping us to reach out to more people around the world. This broadcast has been done by the help of God and by those that he has enabled to partner with this ministry. So consider giving something today. Consider sowing today. Consider giving something good today. To say, Apostle Fitman, I'm standing with you to take this broadcast to many around the world. So today you can do that on PayPal. Or through any other medium, you can do that on PayPal. On PayPal is Faithman Teaching at gmail.com. On PayPal is Faithman Teaching at gmail.com. Or you can go to finishworktv.com and see where the rest said partner 
and press it and you can give from there. Thank you so much for watching this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, don't ever forget this. There is greatness in you.